Welcome back to Ladies Can We Talk with Debbie Georgiatis. The second hour roundtable starts now. Hello there. Welcome back to Ladies Can We Talk and thanks for tuning in. I like to make a short plug for our music every at least once at every show. This uh, music is by Krista Branch, whose music and heart just grabbed me when I was at an event. I spoke at an event and she was uh, uh, the entertainment. She sang at it and it just, my husband was in the back of the room texting me, this is the music you've got. To, we've been looking for music for the show. It just so fits the heart and soul of the show. Well, welcome back to Ladies Can We Talk. Uh, appreciate so much for tuning in in our second hour round table. I have my two leading ladies here tonight, Mari Sullivan and Dorinda Randall. And we have a guest here tonight, Brian Slayton, who's in studio. It's always fun when people come in studio. And Brian is running for Texas State Rep from D- District 2. Hi, sir. Hello, Debbie. How are you? Thank you for having me. Glad to have you here. Thanks for being here. Well, I'm going to jump right in because as we were all observing, these segments go by way too fast. But, you know, Brian, I was shocked a few years ago when um, I was a friend of mine mentioned that she was going to run for state rep. And I looked into what the Texas state reps are paid. And so I'm just going to start. <laughs> Why would a smart guy like you, Brian, want to run for Texas state rep when the salary, and this is a true story, folks, the salary is $7,200 dollars a year or six hundred dollars a month so it's obviously not for the money so why are you doing this well uh my background i was in the ministry as a youth and family minister in southern baptist churches and got out of that now i'm in the private sector working in our family business but it's really from my relationship with the lord with the lord and why i'm doing this I, i'm frustrated i see what's happening uh to small businesses i see what's happening to our economy and um and I'm worried about our religious liberties and on and on. And I just feel like um, God called me to throw my name in the hat and uh, run for Texas House of Representatives. Did you grow up around here? Are you a native? Well, I was born out in Mineola, which is not the district I'm running. But I have family, uh, our family farms in Van Zant County. So Van Zant, Hunt, and Hopkins County. But I grew up in Mesquite, suburb of Dallas, and then traveled around the ministry. Now I'm out there in East Texas again. All right. Well, I happen to know your parents. It's funny because the Slayton family is very involved in politics in Texas and uh, in North Texas. And I know they're very um, they're, they're very passionate about politics, very concerned. So I wasn't really surprised to learn that their son would be running. But um, I hadn't met you until recently. And, I, you know, there are so many issues that float around in the um, political culture. And we tend to look to Washington. I think people sometimes forget how much happens in. In, at the state level, how much can change at the state level? So if you get into the state level, what kind of things do you think really need correcting or really need uh, um, new ideas? Yeah, well, I guess to start, to sum it up, we've got to advance our conservative agenda. We have to be proud and we have to be excited and we have to desire victory. And over these past uh, 12 years, 14 years that Republicans have had control of Texas, we haven't been advancing our conservative agenda. Right. Uh, we're not protecting life. Uh, we haven't advanced the Second uh, Second Amendment issues. We've seen more and more toll roads popping up in Texas, and that's just more government government in our lives. Which, um, you know, a lot of it is we because in Texas we only meet every other year for 140 days. Our legislators in the past have given a lot of authority to these bureaucracies, and. We have bureaucracies here in Texas that are just as out of control as some of them in D.C. And it doesn't matter the issue. They they need to be brought into check and they need we need representatives and elected officials that will be doing the will of the people. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that. We talk in this show quite often at the federal level about various federal agencies that they do derive their power from laws that Congress passes. But once the the uh, bureaucracies are established and they've been in place a long time and they have a, a bed of regulations they, they sleep on, they just kind of uh, – they become a power entity and, and far more unresponsive to the people because you can't unelect these uh, bureaucrats. You can't – you know, you can't do anything to get them out of office. They're just kind of there until the legislature reigns them in. Aren't they the, the only ones who can do it? So what are examples in Texas that are, are just problematic bureaucracies that need to be reined in? Okay, well, transportation, probably a number two or three issue in the state of Texas. And just side note, this past legislative session with two-thirds control in the Texas House. For the Republicans. For the Republicans. We had a Democrat chairman and a Democrat vice chairman in the Transportation Committee. But what's happened is, is they give power to TxDOT to do, of course, transportation issues. 
then they have the uh, transportation committee and then they give it to uh, on down to a regional governing body, which is quasi governmental. For instance, one here in the Metroplex that's surrounding areas, North, the North Central Texas Councils of Government. And so basically, these guys plan transportation issues for the Metroplex. And the public doesn't show up to city council meetings. The public doesn't show right. up to, to county meetings. They have no clue that North Central Texas Councils of Government is making the decision, decisions, enforcing toll roads and managed lanes down their throat. And by the time it gets to the legislature, our, all our elected officials say is, well, we don't have enough time. We only have 140 days. And they said the work's already been done. And, of course, the worst phrase in politics is, well, they've worked really hard on this. <laughs> yeah. So we have to accept it just because they worked hard on it. It doesn't matter if it's good or not. No. Um, so, but anyway, then they, they just want to rubber stamp these these um, these projects. And they're pet projects. Uh, you look at how much high-speed ra- rail in Dallas is subsidized, just DART. But then they want to expand that all around Texas. Exactly. People aren't riding high-speed rail or they're not riding rail in the urban areas. Right. What makes you think they're going to do it out in the country? Right. <laughs> it, it, there's, not one t- there's not one state in the entire United States that has made one penny off of transportation. Mm-hmm. Not one. And yet we're going to keep doing it. I have a friend that he's about to lose his farm because they're going to plow right through in Texas to take out his land to put high-speed rail, and it's mm-hmm. crazy. You know, it's, yeah, you know, it's such a struggle about all this. I'm sorry. That was Dorinda speaking. Sorry. This is a, no, that's great. It's our <laughs> second-hour roundtable. You chime right in. But, you know, it's a really hard thing because it, you just, I think, put your finger on the problem. So many issues are so complex, and you elect a legislator who may say, he or she may say when they're campaigning, well, I don't like, I don't like all these toll roads, and I'm going to fight it. But when they get down to Austin or whatever state capital, whatever state you're in, or they get to Washington, no legislator has the ability, doesn't have more than 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They don't have time to dive into the depth. And so they're almost, of of many issues, so they're almost required to rely on the bureaucracy. And then the bureaucracy, what incentivizes them is you know, input wherever they're getting input. They want to grow their little fiefdom. They want to keep people happy. They want to keep their budget coming from the state. So there's no player involved in the process who's really trying to cut things back. Is that is that right? Well, yeah. And, and, and in some cases that may be an excuse because the left doesn't really have a whole lot of different strategies. Their goal is just to grow government. It doesn't matter if it's in education. doesn't matter if it's in transportation. Or, or parks and wildlife. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. And so I believe that if you're principled and that if you're grounded in what you believe and you understand free market economics, and that is a cons- Christian conservative uh, topic. I mean, yeah. before Adam Smith wrote on free market economics, he stole that idea from a group of monks, the Solomachian Order of Monks. And we've gotten away from that in the church, got away from that in seminaries. And of course, Conservatives, sometimes we're afraid to be bold about free market economics. And that's how you stop these things like toll roads and the crony capitalism. And one quick thing, when uh, Governor Abbott was campaigning for governor with Wendy Davis, the both against Wendy Davis, against, yes. uh, yeah, with, <laughs> <laughs> against Wendy Davis, they both campaigned on no, to- no more toll roads in Texas. It's on both party platforms that people are tired of toll roads and it's crony capitalism. But yet we're fighting it. We're fighting and being pushed down our throats more and more. Why? Because our elected officials won't stand up to the lobbyist and the bureaucrats. Okay. Who is who is lobbying in favor of toll roads? It is, is it the companies that build them? Is that what you're saying? Well, yes, it would have to be uh, uh, the companies that build them, like the construction lobby, the bank lobby, for instance. Um, Senator Bob Hall talks often about the toll road, uh, about 635 on the east side of Dallas, that project. How much it would cost if they just paid cash for it was $600 million. Right. If they build the same road with no toll lanes or nothing, but the same road and all they do is finance it, it's $1 billion. That means the bank has guaranteed $400 million from the taxpayer. And then, of course, if you build all the toll lanes, the you know, the the, the system to bill everybody and everything, it's like $1.7 billion. And so the bank lobby loves these big projects. They love throwing all the bells and whistles on because then it, makes it more difficult to to pay for it in a reasonable manner. Of course, the bank lobby, the the construction lobby really like those things instead of just building the road for what the people need and for our business. 
entrepreneurship. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, we're getting close to the end of our time. I want to loop uh, back to a moment uh, for a moment to your race. So you're running in a primary against an incumbent uh, Republican, and you, the primary date is March 1st. Is this a huge geographically large district? Do you, I mean, how many houses and how are you doing this? Are you knocking on <laughs> yeah. doors? How are you doing this? Yeah, well, it is a very large district. Um, it, if you think about what happens, people work in Dallas and then they retire out in East Texas. Very mm-hmm. common. So in um, the east side of Dallas, there's a district that has about 5,000 voters in the Republican prim- primary because most voters are older. And uh, in my district, there's three counties, and there are over 20,000 voters in the Republican primary. So, and plus, we're rural. Everything's spread out. A lot of people have gates and dogs and other things. But I'm, I'm knocking a lot of doors, uh, saying hi to people. That's, I think, the best way to do it. Uh, I enjoy it from my time in the ministry, um, uh, just meeting people, talking to them. I even have one funny thing happen. My aunt, who she's not very political in the past, but she wants to help me. She's patriotic and wants to help me. And and she goes, I want to go knock doors with you. I said, okay. So we knock on a door. And the guy, I tell him my background. I was in the ministry and I'm frustrated with how things are. And I want to, I want to stand up to the, to the stuff going on. And he, he said, you're kidding me right now. I said, no, that's really who I am. He said, we're just having our family prayer time. And we were praying for God to send us godly leaders to help our country <laughs> wow. and our state. And you're knocking on my door right now. Of course, we went. He asked if we want to come in and pray with him, and we did. And so it's been it's been a lot of fun. And it's primarily door knocking. We do other things, meet and greets, and some phone banking and all that. Okay. Well, we are speaking with Brian Slayton, and he is running for Texas House, from House District Two. Can you close out here and tell our listeners how to find out more about you, your website, and how to find you? Okay. Thank you. Um, it's brianslayton.com, B-R-R-Y-A-N, and then Slayton, S-L-A-T-O-N. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, but on my website, you can find out more about me there and about our race and what's going on. And I appreciate anybody's uh, help. Actually, right now we have some shirts. So if anybody <laughs> donates, we'd be happy to, to send you a shirt. They're the really nice dry fit shirts. And, they are nice. And some of them are with humor and some of them are just make a statement. So. <laughs> All right, Brian Slayton, thank you for coming into Ladies Can We Talk. Thank you for having me. We're going to zip off to our break now, and when we come back, we're going to turn to the presidential race. 